This Week at NASA New observations by the Hubble Space Telescope's Cosmic Origin Spectrograph confirm the existence of a giant scorched planet traveling extremely close to its star. Named HD 209458b, it's being called by astronomers a cometary planet because it has the components of a planet but with a trailing tail like a comet possibly the result of strong stellar winds sweeping off its superheated atmosphere. Mass is being stripped off at the rate of about uh, 100,000 cars per second. So a typical large car plant on the Earth might make 100 to 200,000 to 300,000 cars a year. That's how much they're making. This planet is losing that much mass per second. HD 209458b is 153 light years from Earth, weighs slightly less than Jupiter, and speeds around its star in about three and a half days, which means one of our weeks is equal to two of its years. Up to just recently in human history, we've only known about the planets in our own solar system and can study those, and, and so we develop theories about how stars and planets form based upon that. Now, there is just this incredible diversity of planet types around different stellar types, different orbits, and, and it's causing us to have to rethink entirely how we believe stars and planets formed. NASA's Stratospheric Observatory for Infrared Astronomy, SOFIA, is currently conducting a second series of flight tests to prepare for the Airborne Observatory's early science missions. This phase requires SOFIA to fly above 41,000 feet, with a telescope assembly and aperture operating at its full range of vertical movement. How's the jam now? These tests will enable SOFIA to meet all airworthiness requirements during the flying observatory's 20-year operational life expectancy. An Aerojet AJ-26 rocket engine was delivered to the Stennis Space Center and installed in its E-1 test stand. That's where a series of tests will prove its readiness for use in the Taurus II space launch vehicle, currently under development by Orbital Sciences Corporation of Dulles, Virginia. Two AJ-26 rocket engines similar to this test engine will provide first stage propulsion for the Taurus II and be flown in support of NASA's Commercial Orbital Transportation Services, or COTS cargo demonstration to the International Space Station. <laughs> Members of the STS-132 crew visited the Marshall Space Flight Center. Commander uh, Ken Ham, pilot Tony pilot Antonelli, and, and mission Antonelli. specialists Garrett Reisman Born and Piers Sellers and showed video highlights from their May 14th mission to the International Space Station and participated in a question and answer session with Marshall employees. We hear you during, during ascent, you know, talking back to people in the control room. How hard, how difficult is that? In the video, you heard some hooting and hollering. That's on the internal communication system. So <laughs> we're having hooting and hollering, and when it's time to talk, it's, uh, it's important to get everybody to shut up. <laughs> STS-132 was a 12-day mission that delivered a Russian mini-research module and other equipment to the orbiting outpost. The Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum in Washington celebrated Mars Day with a smorgasbord of activities for everyone's taste. Among them, testing one's skills at maneuvering a robotic rover or using a robotic arm, viewing a real meteorite from Mars, and looking at the red planet in 3D. Visitors also discuss the latest NASA missions and discoveries with research scientists. More people come to this and, and look at what we do in space and aeronautics than any other museum in the world. It's a fabulous opportunity for people to come and learn about our space program, what we're doing both in human exploration, but also in our robotic missions, and really participate in the dream and the realities of exploring space as we have for the last 40 years. Mars Day is held annually at Air and Space to mark the July 1976 landing of Viking 1, the first spacecraft to operate on Mars. A test version of Viking 1 is displayed in the museum's Milestones of Flight Gallery. The Goddard Space Flight Center in Maryland opened its doors to Girl Scouts from across the country for NASA's Girls in Space Camp. 
I don't know what the clean room is, but I'm excited about seeing it. The scouts spent four days learning about NASA missions and how astronomers investigate the mysteries of the universe. It's just really amazing that we can have this opportunity to come here and learn everything about space. Once home, these Girl Scouts will share their new knowledge by, among other activities, helping form Girl Scout astronomy clubs in their hometowns. Let me introduce Leland and Jose and their magical mystery tour of outer space. Welcome. Youngsters join their parents at NASA headquarters for Take Your Children to Work Day. How do you keep food from floating away in space? Boys and girls 7 to 15 years old and their equally eager parents participated in fun, educational, and interactive events to learn more about space, astronauts, and working at the agency. I'm in planetary science, and so we have a lot of the content here. Our, as our asteroid models are here, and our moon rocks, and our Mars meteorites. Sputnik, anybody know? It's hoped the unique experience of accompanying their moms and dads to work will leave children with positive, lasting impressions on their lives and perhaps influence the careers they'll pursue. I don't need an astronaut. And that's This Week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, log on to www.nasa.gov.